Hello, everyone. Last week, we started uh, virtual memory. In particular, we talked about um, the introduction to different terms and definition in virtual memory. We have also talked about um, the thrashing problem and how the principle of locality is providing a solution to avoid thrashing problem. For this week, we will continue our discussion on virtual memory. In particular, we will talk about uh, virtual memory paging. Um, we will explore different virtual memory um, paging across different strategies using either two level page tables, invertible page table, translation look aside buffer, and we will mainly focus on how the address translation is conducted, whether we are using the two level page table or even the invertible page table or the translation look aside buffer. And finally, we will go over um, different case studies across different op various operating systems and see how each operating system um, invoke or like adopt to different paging strategies um, to provide an efficient memory management scheme. So as we discussed last week, we talked about a uh, real and virtual memory. And because a process um, executes only in main memory, um, then this process will be assigned to a real memory location. And we say um, this process is um, ready to for execution uh, because it's now in the real memory. On the other hand, um, sometimes we do have larger a need um, of huge sizes memory, so which has created the need of the virtual memory, which is commonly on the desk, um, which allow uh, a very effective multi-programming um, strategies. And actually it relieves the user um, uh, constraints of um, tight uh, sizes of the memory. We have also talked about um, different terminologies that commonly used in virtual memory, including um, virtual memory versus real memory and virtual address vers uh, ver uh, versus real address and the address space versus the virtual address space. The differences between each of um, um, uh, each pair of um, terminologies, whether it's in the main memory or in the virtual memory. And then we said uh, previously, we, uh, we have addressed the main um, partitioning scheme of memory management. And we said um, it's uh, not efficient anymore because we have um, to provide um, a, a variability or like a more dynamic way of uh, handling processes rather than just like partition the memory and assign processes into the memory. And uh, solutions to this was paging and segmentation. So uh, we talked about the simple paging and simple segmentation in previous classes. In today's class, we will talk about virtual paging. The term virtual memory is um, usually actually associated with systems um, that employ paging. Although virtual memory based on segmentation is also used and uh, will be discussed next week. Uh, the use of paging um, to achieve virtual memory uh, was first reported uh, for the first Altus computer uh, and, and soon came into widespread commercial use afterwards. So in the discussion of simple paging, um, we previously uh, indicated that each process has uh, its own page table. And when all of um, its pages are loaded into main memory, the page table for a process is created and load it into the main memory. And each page table entry, sometimes we use abbreviation as PTA, actually contain uh, the frame number of the corresponding page in the main uh, memory. Um, and a page table is also needed for virtual memory. So whatever we come to the word paging, whether it's like um, simple paging without the consideration of virtual memory, or virtual paging with the constraint that we do have virtual memory and some processes might be in the virtual memory, we will also stick with page tables. So um, let me show you um, a typical um, 
memory management formats, whether we are using virtual paging, virtual segmentation, or even combined virtual paging and virtual segmentation. The last two, which include the virtual segmentation and virtual and the virtual combined segmentation and paging will be discussed next week. The main focus in this week would be on virtual paging. Uh, again, uh, it's difficult to associate uh, a unique page table with each process. In this case, however, when we talk about virtual uh, paging, the page table entries become more complex, as we can see in figure A. This, because only some of the pages of a process may be in the main memory, uh, and some of them might not be in the main memory. At this point, each entry in the page table uh, entry, will, we will add a bed. This bed is called the P bed, which is the present bed. Um, this bed is needed um, in each page table entry to indicate whether the corresponding page is present or not, present in the main memory or not. So if this bed indicates that page in the, uh, is in the main memory, then immediately the entry I will also indicate the frame number of that page. In addition to the P pad, we also have two, a couple of other pads. Uh, the first one is called um, the modified bed, which we refer to it as the M bed. Um, this one is used to indicate whether the contents of the corresponding page um, have been altered uh, or changed since the page was last loaded into the main memory. If there has been no change at all, then it's not necessarily to write the page out when it comes time to replace the page in the frame that it's, uh, it is um, currently occupies. Um, there's also need to add other control bits. So this also another control bits that we added in um, each um, entry in the page table entry. Um, those control bits uh, may also be uh, presented. Um, um, examples for those control bits could be like for protection purposes, for sharing purposes that are mainly used to indicate um, uh, the way that the management is performed at the page level. Um, that, that's why these bits are uh, used for this uh, purpose. At this point, the virtual address has a similar format as the logical address that we talked about it for simple paging. And the virtual address at this point uh, also contain page number in the virtual memory and also an offset. On the other hand, if you compare this to virtual segmentation, you can see that the, um, the segment table entry also has a different format as we compare it to the simple segmentation. We also have the P bed and we have the M bed and other control beds in addition to the length and the segment, and the segment uh, starting address. And the virtual address also will um, have a segment number and an offset. There is a third scheme in memory management format that combines both segmentation and paging. We will paging. We will talk about this in more detail next week. At this point, we combine the strategies of paging and segment and segments, in which segments um, uh, um, segments number and will be uh, the virtual address uh, will consist uh, is like consist of segment number, page number, and also offset. And within the segment table entry, we do have some control bits, the length of each segment and static address of the segment. And in addition to the segment table entry, we also have a page table entry that also has the P and the M pets, in addition to some control bits and also the frame number. We will talk about the address translation and how to maintain such management using either segmentation, virtual segmentation, or combined segmentation and paging next week. So the basic mechanism now, let's focus on paging, virtual paging. The basic mechanism for reading a word from memory actually involves the translation of a virtual address. Previously, we called the logical address, which consists of a page number and offset. And the translation at the end would need um, uh, to translate such uh, virtual address into a physical address which reside into the main memory, which consists of a frame number and also an offset. This has to be done using a page table. 
So that's why the focus also using the same strategies that we have discussed before for sample paging, which includes page table. And as a matter of fact, because the page table is of variable length, depending on the size of the process, we can't expect it, um, um, we can't actually expect to hold it in registers. And instead, it must be in the main memory to be accessed. So in the following figure, we see a recommendation to use hardware implementation. When a particular process is running, a register will actually hold the starting address of the page table for that process. The page number of the virtual address will be used to index that table and look up the corresponding frame number. This is combined with the offset portion. Of the virtual address to produce the desired real address. Typically, the page number field is longer than the frame number field. So N is always greater than M, where N pets are used to indicate the page number and M is used to indicate the frame number. M, uh, N is used in the virtual address while M is used in the physical address. This inequality between the number of bits for uh, the page number and M, which is the number of bits for the frame number in the physical address, uh, results, this inequality results from the fact that the number of pages in a process may exceed the number of frames in the main memory. So address translation uh, in virtual page is, is straightforward, similar to the address translation in the sample paging as we discussed before. The only thing is we are now dealing with the virtual address where a process um, pages, some of them might be in the main memory, some of them might be in the virtual memory. So we will do the address translation by extracting the page number from the virtual address and then um, add this to and the page table uh, pointer, which, point, which points to the starting address of the page table that will retrieve the page number within the page table at which we index the frame number that corresponds to this page. And then once we extract the frame number, we will um, amend the offset to the frame number to extract the physical address in the main memory. So now let's uh, discuss um, um, well, some examples about how this um, address translation in virtual memory could be conducted. In this example, suppose the page table for uh, the process currently executing on the processor looks like the following uh, virtual uh, page. Uh, this is, so this is the page table and each entry or each row in this uh, virtual page table, this is the uh, page table entry. When we deal with virtual memory, sometimes we call it virtual page table entry. Um, so um, inside it, inside this entry, we do have uh, the virtual page number. So you can see that virtual page number zero, uh, valid bit means this page is accessible, so it's valid. And uh, zero for the modified bit means that it has not been modified since the last access. And the corresponding frame number is in the main memory or in the real memory is frame number four. However, if you look to um, page virtual page number two, you can see that it's uh, the invalid bit is to zero. So this is not accessible. So it doesn't have a corresponding frame number. So when we look, when we extract from the virtual address and for some reason, if it's a uh, virtual page number two, then we don't have a corresponding uh, page frame number. So a page fault will be generated. Similarly for uh, pay, uh, virtual page number um, four. Two and four, um, they will generate a page fault because we don't have a corresponding page uh, frame number in the main memory. Keep in mind that sometimes we provide this table in binary format, sometimes we provide it into decimal format or numeric format. Um, everything is numbered starting from zero and all addresses are memory byte addresses. So we use the unit byte. 
And we do have the information here that the page size is um, 1024 bytes. So page, so if we are dealing with 16, 16 bit uh, virtual address. And uh, each page size is of um, 1000. So we have page size of 1000. bytes, which is two to the power of 10 bytes. So that means we do have 10 bits over here for the offset. And for six, other, another six bits we used for the page number. So the first six bits now are used for the page number. This is only for a 16 bit virtual address. Of course, this would change if we have 32 or 64. You have to keep tracking uh, uh, the page size, the, um, the page table entry size, and um, of course the virtual um, memory size. So the first six bits are used for the page number and the next 10 bits are used for the offset, which we'll, we will use it next to extract um, the real address. So let's continue this um, question. Uh, the first part, it asks you to describe exactly how in general a virtual address generated by the CPU is translated into physical uh, main memory. So uh, an easy answer to this, we could say, first split the binary address into virtual page number and an offset, and then use the virtual page number as index into the page table, extract the page frame number, and then concatenated or amended the offset to the page number to get the physical memory address. This should be your answer for the first part of the question. For the second part, uh, it says, what physical address? So we're looking to real address right now into the main memory, given the fact that we have the following virtual addresses. Um, if, it, if we have a decimal number, so this, these numbers are given in decimal, the expectation is when you solve the question, also your answer should be in decimal, unless it's stated otherwise. Uh, also, if there is a page fault, don't try to handle, just like mentioned that a page fault is generated or not. So let's just start now. Uh, we have three virtual addresses that we would like to do address translation using the virtual paging scheme to extract the physical address. I'm going to do each one of those separately. So start by the first address, which is um, virtual address equal to 1052. This is in decimal. So um, now we are dealing with the 16 bed, as I said, uh, virtual address in which the first six bits are used for the page number, which we will use it next to index the page table. And then we have another 10 bits that are used to uh, declare the offset within each page. So um, from the given address, like uh, 1052, we can clearly see if we do uh, the binary uh, lookup table, like this is if we look to this table, uh, 1052, the closest one is 1024. So I'm gonna subtract from 124. So that means uh, 1052, we subtract two to the power of 10. So at 10, we do have one over here. So the result is, um, 28. So the 28 is the offset. And now we have 28. So 28 could be 16 plus 8 plus 4. So at the 16, which is 2 to the power of 4, we have one. At the two to the power three, we do have one. Two to the power two, we do have one because it's 16, eight, eight, and four. And here we have zero and zero and zero elsewhere. So this is still my offset, 
which equals to 28. And this is um, page number. So page number one, uh, as you can see, if we, I'm gonna mark here the six bits so I can extract the page number. So page number here will be page number one. So if we index the, the page table, um, we can see that page number one uh, is assigned, uh, is available and it is assigned to frame number seven. So corresponding to this, if we're gonna draw a real address where I still have uh, 10 bits for the offset. So I still have the 28 offset. And now I do have seven. For the frame number. So if you would like to find the real address, which is amendment of the frame number plus the offset. So I still have zero, zero, three ones. Uh, we do have two to the power 10 plus two to the power 11, two to the power 12. And those three numbers are extracted from those three digits. So do you, this is bit, bit number 10, 11, and 12. So do we do have two to the power 10, two to the power 11, two to the power 12. And then of course, plus the offset, which is the 28. So this is um, like, uh, if we got like two to the power 10 as a common factor. So this is one plus two plus four plus 28. So this is like seven times two to the power 10 plus 28. So the decimal real address will be 7,000 196. So this is the real address in the main memory that corresponds to a virtual address of 1052. And you cannot do such translation unless you do have the page table. So do we have a page fault here? We don't because we were able to uh, find a frame number corresponds to the page number from the virtual address. If we do the second one, so let's now do the second address translation in virtual address uh, mechanism, where the second address is, so that our second virtual address is 2,221. So this uh, can be easily, uh, the closest one to this is 2048. Um, um, so if I'm gonna subtract this with the 2048, so I do have 173 offset. So um, if we get a map this, um, this number, like the 2048 from the lookup, the binary lookup table, this is two to the power 12. I do believe, like two to the power 12, two to the power 11, that's two to the power 11. So we do have a one here, a zero here, zero elsewhere. And then our offset would be the 173. This is in decimal, I'm still referring to decimal. You could, you could easily map it to binary, but if you like to go for decimal calculation, you don't need to waste your time, convert it to binary and then back to decimal again. So you can see that for the page number, we do have page number two. So this is page we're extracting uh, from the uh, virtual address. We were able to extract page number two by dividing, uh, by converting the virtual address into an, a binary as, um, um, representation. And from page number two, when we index into the page in, uh, table, we can see that uh, we don't have a corresponding frame number because it's not a valid um, page anymore. So at this point, we can we can say that uh, the 2,221, which was um, 2 to the power 11 plus 173, this was maps to virtual page Number two, however, we couldn't find a corresponding frame in the main memory, so we do have a page fault. Uh, for the third example here, where we do have 
the virtual address equals to 5,499. So the closest one to this address is 4096, which is two to the power 12. So this is two to the power 12. So I do have uh, one here and let me change the number or the color. So I do have one here and zero over here. And if we subtract um, 5,499 from two to the power 12, we can see that we have a leftover of 1,403. So I can still subtract from two to the power 10. So I do have another one here. And that will leave us to an offset of 379. So this is the last six bits for uh, the page number. And these are the 10 bits for the offset for a 16-bit address. So this is a 379 offset and decimal assignment. So I can clearly see here that the 101 for the page number will be mapped to a page number five. So this is page, virtual page. So now we are accessing virtual page number five. So if you look into the page um, table, uh, virtual page number five is assigned to frame number zero. So that means uh, if we write amending frame number zero for also the last six bits for the frame number uh, with the assumption that the frame size the, uh, is the same as the page size and with the offset, we can see that we have zeros from frame, frame number zero. So zero everywhere for the frame number. And we still have an offset of 379. So now the physical address equals to zero plus 379. So this is 379. So this is our physical address. So um, the 5,499 address were actually mapped to virtual page number five, which was mapped to uh, page frame number zero, uh, which results in an address of 379. That's how you answer this question. When it requests to translate a virtual address into a real address, using the virtual memory uh, with, that, with, the, with the inclusion of their virtual memory. So um, in, uh, in most actual, in most systems, uh, there is one page table per process, but each process uh, can occupy a huge amount of virtual memory. For example, uh, if you look to the VAX architecture, each process can have up to two to the power of 31, which equals to two gigabytes of virtual memory. So if we use like, for example, uh, 512 byte pages, uh, that means that we have as many as two to the power of 22 page table entries, which are required just per process. Clearly, the amount of memory devoted to page tables alone could be very high. To overcome this problem, most virtual memory schemes store page tables in virtual memory rather than in real memory. This means that page tables are subject to paging just as other pages are. When a process is running, at least a part of its page table must be in the main memory including the page table entry of the current executing page. Um, with, this has created a need of different paging strategy rather than using just one page um, uh, leveling scheme, there will be multi-leveling paging scheme. What is a multi-level paging scheme? Is a paging scheme which consists of two or more levels of page tables in a hierarchy manner. Sometimes we call it hierarchical paging. So if you see the two terminologies, both of them are the same, multi-level paging versus hierarchical paging. It is also known as um, hierarchical paging and sometimes they say multi-level hierarchical paging, such that the entries of the level one, so we have multi-levels, so starting from level one, level two, up to whatever, uh, how many levels you do have, 
So start the entries in level one page table will contain pointers to level two page tables, page table. And entries of the level two page table also has pointers to level three page table and so on based on how many levels you do have. Finally, the entries of the last level page table are stores, uh, um, actually stores um, the actual frame information. So this is multi-level paging uh, helps in reducing the amount of or the size of page tables that we just need to store it in the main memory to avoid such huge sizes of page tables for just for each process, this has created a need for the multi-level paging. Some processors make use of two-level scheme to organize large page table. In this scheme, uh, there is a page directory in which each entry uh, I would point to a page table. And as a matter of fact, in the following figure, what we can see is an assumption, like let's take an exa example to illustrate the idea. If we, um, if we work on uh, 32 uh, bit address, that just an assumption to show you how much memory we can save if we used multi-leveling page tables. Uh, so if we work on 32 bit address, and if we assume that um, byte level addressing, so our assumptions here is we have byte level addressing, and um, we also assume that um, each page is of size um, four kilobyte, that all of these are just assumptions for this example. So four kilobyte, which is two to the power two times a kilobyte, which is two to the power 10. So this is two to the power 12 pages. Then um, the, if we do have um, four kilobytes for pages uh, and our virtual address space. So this is our virtual address space, which is of size four gigabyte, which equals to two to the power of 32. I mean, just using binary formats. Um, uh, so we'll align with all the, um, the terminology of virtual address and binary addresses and real addresses. So the virtual address space, if we assume it's of two to the power of three, two. So uh, if we divided two to the power of three, two divided by the size of each page, which is two to the power 12. So we do the subtraction of the power. So we end up to have two to the power of 20 pages. Um, if each of these pages actually is mapped by a four byte page table entry. So if you assume that each table entry equals to four bytes, we can create a user page table. So we now have two levels. The first one, we're gonna use a, a root page table and the second one is a user page table with the assumption that each page is mapped by a four byte page table entry. Then we can create a user page table of two to the power of 20 page table entries, which requires two, four megabyte. Two to the power of 22, I'm um, sorry. Not to the power 20 to the power 22. So as you can see here, the entire page table, which was very huge initially to, um, uh, to hold all of the virtual addresses and which later should be in the main memory, we were able to divide it, such page table um, into two levels. One of them has to be in the main memory, which is the root table. And the second one, I don't need to keep it in the main memory. The idea that initially we have the four gigabyte page tables and we didn't need this. We divide it into two tables that can easily be accessed by mapping pointers from one level to the next level. So what we need actually to save it in the main memory is the root page table and the other user page table should be in the virtual memory. And the, vert and the page table, um, the user page table will be mapped by the root table using the entries in the root table. So you can see that this two level hierarchical page table strategy has saved a lot of memory uh, for each process not to reside in the main memory and its uh, page tables. So we, we put the process into the main memory 
but we try to keep the page tables into the virtual memory, but we cannot keep all of the page table in the virtual memory, otherwise we have to do a lot of paging too. So we have to compromise this, but keeping part of the page table into the main memory and the huge part in the virtual memory. So we could save more space for the process and its page table. And if there is a need to extract any entry from the page table, we go directly to the root page table, we index the entries that we needed, and then we go to the user table in the virtual memory to extract the corresponding page from the virtual memory. So at this point, when we use the two level hierarchical page table, a different address translation scheme would be required. So in this figure, we can see the steps that are involved in the address translation for the two level paging system. The root page uh, always remain in the main memory as I clearly said before. And in the virtual address at this point, we have the first 10 bits are used uh, for index um, uh, into the root page table to find a certain page table entry for a page of the user page table. And um, that, that, uh, that's why we use the first 10 bits to, um, to, um, to index um, a certain page from the root page table. We he, here we said it, it has um, 1000 to uh, 24, so two to the power 10, because we use 10 as corresponding 10 bits over here. Um, and we use such indexing to extract a certain um, entry in the root page table, while based on the starting address of the root page table into the main memory. And then if, uh, if that page is not in the main memory, then for sure a page fault will be generated. And if that page is in the main memory, then we're gonna use the next 10 bits uh, of the virtual address to index into the user page table entry page to find the page table entry of the page that is referenced by that virtual address. So we use the second 10 bits to, uh, to index the user page table, uh, which is only of size four kil kilobyte at, the, um, uh, at this point. And once we index in the page exist, it can, we can easily extract the corresponding frame number. We amend the rest, the, the, the final 12 bits of offset to um, the frame number to find the page of uh, frames, the frames into, into the, main, uh, the frames and the corresponding real address into the main memory. So you can see here we have multi-level of paging, which would need multi-level of virtual address translation. We look first into the root table, and then uh, uh, once we extract um, an entry from the root table, we would extract it to, um, to find an index in the root table, which uh, will be used uh, as a starting address. In the user table, we use the second bit to find the offset or the corresponding entry in um, the user table. And once we find it, what's inside will be just the frame number. This is the last search. Uh, and once we extract the frame number, we amended a to the offset to find the real address. So um, that the multi-level paging is not recommended in most of the time because it just happened that we have um, a drawback of um, the multi-levels uh, uh, scheme, such that um, the type of the page tables that we have been discussing so far is actually proportional to uh, that of the virtual address space. An alternative approach to the use of the one or even the multi-level page tables is to use what we called inverted page tables. A uh, variation of this approach are commonly used in um, uh, Spark computer architectures or even uh, the IA64 architectures or the PowerPCs architectures. Uh, and even implementation of the MAC operating system on the RTPC also use this technique. Uh, in this approach, uh, the page number portion of a virtual address is actually mapped into a hash value using a simple hashing function. So this is where we actually use hashing right now. The hash value is considered as a pointer um, to uh, the inverted um, page table 
which contains the page table entry. There is uh, one entry in the inverted page table for each real memory page frame, rather than one per virtual page. So that means a fixed portion of real memory is required for the tables, regardless of the number of processes or virtual pages supported. Because more than one virtual address may be mapped into the same hash table entry, the hash function could generate collisions. A chaining technique is used for managing the overflow. The hashing uh, technique results in, in chains that are typically sh uh, short between one and two entries. The page table structure at the end is uh, considered to be inverted because it indexes page table entries by frame number rather than by virtual page number. So to illustrate the idea of the inverted page table structure and how the address translation using the uh, uh, implementation of inverted page table approach uh, is conducted. For a physical memory size, if we assume that we are dealing with a physical memory size of um, two to the power M frames, where now M bits are only are used to, uh, um, to, um, to index the frame numbers, while we do have N bits for the page numbers. So um, the virtual address now um, is of size um, two to the power N. Um, so um, because we are indexing the inverted page table just based on the frames, uh, and our hashing function takes n bits and generate m bits such that n is always greater than m. So the page table, the inverted page table, will contain two to the power m entries. So in the ith entry, if we go to a entry a ith entry, we are referring to frame number i because we are indexing the frame directly. In this example, the virtual address includes n bit page number where n is greater than m, and the hash function maps those n bits page numbers into an m bits um, quantity, which is used to index into the inverted page, number, page table. In the inverted page table, we have one entry for each physical memory frame, and a chain would be needed if collision is happening. So uh, each entry in the uh, inverted page table would include the following information. It would include a page number, which is the page number portion of the virtual address, a process identifier, uh, which contain um, the identifier ID for the process that owns this page, uh, the combination of page number and process identifier actually identify a page within the virtual address space of a particular process. We also have some control bits. This field includes flags such as valid, referenced, and even modified, and protection and even locking information. Finally, we have chain pointer. This field is null, perhaps indicated by a separate bit if there are no chains entry for this entry. Otherwise, the field contains the index value, which should be a value between zero and two to the power m minus one, where m is used for the frame number of the next entry in the chain. So how the inverted page table translation is conducted? Let's uh, answer the following question. Assume you want to implement a hashed inverted page table for the following figure. We assume that we use the uh, two level. So in the following figure, we have the two level hierarchical paging and we would like to convert this to, um, uh, to implement a hash inverted page table using a certain hat function. I could give you any, any hash function that map an N into an M. And um, in this question in particular, the, our hash function map 20, page, 20 bits for page number into six, page, uh, six bit hash value. 
keep in mind the table entry contains the page number. So if within each um, um, inverted page table, we have a page number. We also have a frame number. And we have a chain pointer. And the address translation is we, we, we have the page number, which is n bits. We send it to a hash function that will generate m bits. Those m bits uh, are, um, would be used to index the inverted page table uh, to uh, either extract the frame directly or go over the chain. So with the assumption that the page table allocates space for up to three overflow entries per hash entry. So uh, we could have, um, we allow up to three overflow entries. The question is how much memory we could actually, um, memory space uh, does the hash uh, inverted page table would take? To answer this question, we can see that we have six bits that are used um, to uh, index um, the uh, inverted bitch table because we have a hash function that generated six bits out of 20. And then each uh, entry has uh, in a number, number of rows would be the two to the power of six. And then we multiply by two to generate the entire number of entries within the inverted bitch table. Um, so now we have 128 entries. And uh, each entry, as I said, it would have a page number, a frame number, and a chain. A page number is now is of 20, uh, uh, 20 uh, bits, which uh, was extracted from the virtual address. What we assume that the frame number also would be 20. And um, uh, because we allow three overflows, so two to the power three will give us eight bits for the chain index. So this is 48 bits, which correspond to six bytes. So we have 128 entry times the six bytes will generate 768 bytes in total. So this is the, this is the size of the uh, inverted page table um, that would um, take. So in principle, every virtual memory reference um, can cause two physical memory access. One to fetch the uh, a page table entry, and another memory access to fetch the desired data. Thus, a straightforward virtual uh, memory scheme would have the effect of doubling the memory access time, which is a major problem. To overcome this problem, most virtual memory schemes make use of a special high speed cache for page table entries. This special uh, high-speed cache is called translation look-aside puffer. This, ca this cache function um, 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 functions uh, in the same way as memory cache, that, like the, the traditional memory cache. And it actually contains those pages, um, uh, table entries that have been mostly recently uh, used. The organization of the resulting uh, uh, paging hardware can be seen in the following figure. Uh, given a certain virtual address, the processor will first examine the translation look-aside buffer. If the desired page using the page number, so we're gonna do um, uh, checking first in the translation look-aside buffer because it's a, it's a high-speed cache that is um, um, you used to store those um, most recently used pages. So it, it is used for a uh, high speed of accessing um, those pages rather than doing double uh, memory references to uh, physical memory locations. Uh, how this, is, uh, this procedure is done, we first examine the translation look-aside buffer and if the desired page entry is present. So we say we do have a TLP hat. And at this point, we can easily uh, extract the frame number uh, from the uh, lookup table, from the translation lookup buffer, um, and then the real address is, is uh, formed. However, if the desired page table entry is not found in the translation look, look aside buffer, so we say we have translation look aside buffer mess. 
then the processor will uh, use the page number to index the process page table and examine the corresponding page table entry. Uh, keep in mind the translation docker-side buffer is a speed up cache while the page table is our traditional page table. We store only those pages that are mostly used in the translation docker-side buffer and every other page we store it in the page table. Uh, if the present bit uh, within each entry like the pbit over here is set to one, then the page is in the main memory and the processor can retrieve the frame number from the page table entry to form the read address immediately. Also, the processor will update the TLP, the translation look aside buffer to include this new page table entry. And finally, if we assume that we can't find this page in the TLP or we can't even find it in our page table, uh, uh, that means the desired page is not in the main memory and a memory access fault, which is a page fault will be generated. At this point, we leave um, the, the, the the main uh, procedure of generating those page faults by the operating system. And the operating system will be responsible to load the needed page and update, update the page table. To give more details about how this process is performed, the following flow chart shows the use of the TLP uh, the flowchart actually shows that if the desired page is not in the main memory, a page fault interrupts, uh, causes the page fault handling routine to be invoked. To keep the flowchart simple, the fact that the operating system may dispatch another process while a uh, disk input output is underway is not shown over here. So we extract this from the flowchart. And using the principle of locality, most virtual memory references will be to locations in recently used pages. Therefore, most references will involve page table entries in the cache. As you can see here, we start first by checking the CPU will check the translation look aside buffer. If the page that we're looking for is in the TLP, so we good, we go immediately, the CPU will generate the real address. Otherwise, we check the page table. Uh, whether it's one level or two level page tables, we will have to do the translation within it if it exists. If not, um, then uh, we, uh, we check if it's in the main memory or not. If yes, we update the TLP and generate the physical address. If no, we have to follow the page table routine in which um, the operating system instructs the CPU to read the page from the disk. The CPU activates IO hardware, and then the page will be translate, transferred from the disk to the main memory. And once we put it back to the main memory, we have to check if the memory is full, then we have to do page replacement, which we will talk about it next week. Otherwise, we have to update uh, the page table and go back to the folded instruction. So when it comes to the translation look aside buffer, the, the, we are not using direct addressing anymore. We are using a different terminology, which is called associated mapping. There are a number of additional details concerning the actual organization of the TLP. Because the TLP contains only some of the entries uh, in a full page table, we can't actually simply index into the TLP based on just base number, a page number. And instead, each entry in the TLP must include the page number as well as the complete page table entry. At this point, the processor is equipped with hardware that allows, allows it to into, uh, integrate simultaneously uh, a number of TLB entries to determine if there is a match on a page number. This technique is called associative mapping. And it's actually uh, 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 contrasted when we compare it to direct mapping or indexing uh, or even um, lookup um, in page tables as we did before. The design of the translation look aside buffer um, has created a need um, in um, looking differently to the way entries are organized. And in a way that each entry um, is considered as those entries that are mostly used to uh, be accessed. So um, 
in associative mapping, uh, we, we can see uh, as compared to the direct mapping or indexing, such mapping always used with the translation local site buffer, where direct mapping is always used with the traditional page tables. So um, the design of the TLB um, also must consider the way in which entries are organized in the TLB and which entry to replace when a new entry is brought in. Um, uh, this issue must be considered in any hardware caching um, design. So you can see here for the direct mapping, we start by the virtual address. We have uh, some bits for the page number or some other bits for the offset. For direct mapping, we use the page number to index the page table. And then we find the corresponding, if the pipette is one, so we find immediately the corresponding frame number. And we just amend the frame number to the offset to extract the real address. On the other hand, if we are dealing with the translation look aside buffer, so we, the page number here would be used to index the translation, um, uh, the TLP. And then once we inside the TLB, we will immediately extract the, uh, we index um, immediately um, into the TLP and we extract the frame number um, immediately. So we use the frame number 37 uh, with also amendment to the offset to extract the real address. The difference between the direct addressing and the such addressing is we only store those most recently used pages in the TLB. So as you can see here, page numbers are not running in sequence. It depends on the fast speed of extracting those pages because they are mostly used. Then I don't need to store them in the ordinary uh, page table. I can store them in the TLP and any other page, page uh, pages that are not uh, commonly used, I can keep it in the page table. So um, an important um, hardware design uh, decision is uh, the size of the page to be used. There are several factors to consider as a matter of fact. One is internal fragmentation. Clearly, the smaller the page size, the lesser the amount of internal fragmentation. To optimize the use of main memory, we would like to reduce internal fragmentation. On the other hand, the smaller the page, the greater is the number of pages required per process, which would uh, mean that more pages per process means larger page tables. And for large programs, in a heavily multi-programmed environment, this may mean that some portion of the page tables of active processes must be in virtual memory, not in the main memory because they are so huge. Thus, there may be a double page fold for a single reference to memory. First, to bring in the needed portion of the page table and second, to bring in the process page. Another factor you should consider is that the physical characteristics of most secondary memory devices, which are rational, favor a large page uh, size for more efficient uh, block transfer of data. In the following table, we can see the page sizes used in different machines. So for Atlas, we use 548 bit words. For IBM 370, we have four kilobytes. For IBM AS400, we have 512 bytes, similar to the VAX family. We have, uh, for the DC Alpha machine, we do have eight kilobyte. For the MAPS, we have four. It might be between four and 16. For the Ultra Spark, we have, it might be a number between eight and um, kilobyte and four um, megabyte. Uh, for, uh, sorry, for the MAPS, if between four kilobyte and 16 megabyte. For the Ultra Spark, we have between eight kilobyte to four megabyte. For uh, IBM Power, uh, it is four kilobyte, and uh, for the Itanium, it is between four kilobytes to 256 uh, megabyte. So the design issue uh, of page size is related to the size of the physical memory, uh, main memory, and the program size. Uh, at the same at the same time, the main memory is getting larger. 
the address space used by application is also growing. The trend is most obvious um, on personal computers and workstations where applications are becoming increasingly um, complex. Furthermore, um, many programming techniques used in large programs tend to, to decrease actual um, the locality of references within a process. Uh, for example, in object-oriented techniques, um, they encourage the use of many a small program and data modules with references scatters over a, a relatively larger number of objects over a relatively short period of time. In multi-threading uh, applications, um, uh, actually it may result in uh, um, different changes in the instruction stream and uh, in a way that the memory is a completely uh, referenced in a scatter way. So um, one way to improve uh, the, the performance of uh, different memory management scheme, especially like if we say an example like TLP, is to use a larger TLP with more entries. However, TLP size interacts with other aspects of the hardware design, like the memory cache, number of memory access per instruction cycle. So it's very challenging to actually uh, came up with an optimum page size. There have been different number of designs uh, of using multiple page sizes and several uh, microprocessor architecture machines. They actually support multiple page sizes. They don't have to use just one page size, they use multiple, including uh, MEPS um, R4000, Alpha platforms, the Ultra Spark, and even the Pentium. And uh, multiple page sizes it provide flexibility needed to use um, the translation local buffer very effectively because now we can work over different um, page sizes. We are not stick to just when, uh, one size. Um, that will help on adding large continuous regions in the address space for a process to be loaded easily in the memory and accessed um, uh, in, from the translation local buffer. Um, uh, however, most commercial operating system, they still support only one page size, uh, regardless of the capability of the underlying hardware. And the reason for this is that the page size affects many aspects of the operating system. Thus, a change to multiple page sizes is complex uh, as an undertaking um, uh, pro um, uh, um, assumptions or uh, recommendations. However, it's, uh, it, it is used in some operating system, as I explained, but um, it needs uh, a careful attention because it is related to many other aspects in the system. So as we can see so far, we discussed uh, virtual paging, uh, how uh, different schemes for memory management, like the multi-level hierarchical page tables, um, the invertible um, uh, page table and the look aside the buffer, um, so these are different memory management scheme um, that are widely used um, in virtual memory, either inverted bridge table or um, uh, the look aside buffer, the translation look aside buffer, all of these are recommended. Now, now let's, now, let's take some case studies uh, to see how different operating system actually um, adopt different uh, paging schemes. And uh, there might be some new, new terminologies um, that I will explain them in more details uh, next week. So because Unix is intended to machine independent, uh, its memory management uh, scheme will vary from one system uh, to the next um, system. Uh, I, I wanted to start by Unix first because it's the big umbrella of most of the operating systems. As you can see, um, Underneath, I can talk about the SVR4 and I can talk about Solaris. So the first case study I will start with is Unix. Uh, earlier version of uh, Unix um, simply used variable uh, partitioning with no virtual memory scheme. However, current implementation of Unix um, and even Solaris, they make use of paged, uh, paged virtual memory. In SVR, uh, SVR4 and Solaris, there are actually two separate memory management scheme. The first one is called the Beijing system and the second one is the kernel memory allocator. Um, the Beijing system 
in um, in SV R four and Solaris provides a virtual memory capability uh, that allocates pages, uh, page frames in main memory to processes, and also allocate page frames to disk uh, plot buffers. So um, although this is an, uh, an effective memory management scheme for user processes and disk IO, a paged virtual memory scheme is less suited to, man uh, to managing the memory allocation for the kernel. That's why for this purpose, a kernel memory allocator is needed. For paged uh, virtual memory, uh, Unix uh, make use of a number of data structured um, that with the minor adjustment are considered as machine independent. If we are using page table, uh, page, um, uh, just one level of paging, uh, then the page system will use the page frame number in addition to some other control information related to uh, copy and write, modify, reference, uh, uh, valid, and even protect. For um, the um, disk block descriptor, we also need information about the swap device number, device uh, block number, type of the storage. And for each page frame data um, table entry, we store information about the state of the page, the reference count, logical device block number, and um, the data pointer. And if there is any need to swap uh, an entry from the table entries, we need information about the reference count and the page or storage unit number. So these are the memory management formats for Unix. In the following table, we can see that for, for page virtual memory, Unix make use of a number of data structured. The first one in more detail is the page table. And the second one is the disk block descriptor. Third one is the page frame uh, data table entry. And the fourth one is the swap use uh, table entry. In page table, uh, typically there will be one page table per process with one entry for each page in virtual memory for that process. In the disk block descriptor, uh, um, associated with each page of a process is an entry in the table that describes the disk copy of the virtual page. For the page table data uh, table, for the page frame data table entry, uh, we have information about each frame of the real memory and uh, is indexed by a frame number. This table is used by the replacement algorithm. I'm going to talk about the replacement algorithm next week. Finally, the swab use table. Uh, there is one swab use table for each swab uh, device with one entry for each page in the device. Most of those fields or like those little information in those tables are, um, are important to learn. I don't want you to memorize any of these except that, that we have four uh, different tables uh, when it comes to Yonix um, that are commonly used the page table entry the disk block descriptor, as well as the page frame data table entry, and finally, the swap use table entry and the use of each one of those entries. So uh, because we're going to do a lot of page re replacement discussion next week, uh, I will skip uh, the page replacement discussion for Unix. I would just only illustrate the idea that the page frame data table is used for page replacement. And uh, several pointers uh, are used to create lists within this table. All of the available frames are linked together in a list of three frames available for bringing in the page. When a number of available frames drops below a certain threshold, the kernel will steal a number of frames to uh, compensate. So um, um, the page replacement algorithm that is commonly used in Unix is uh, the clock cycle page replacement. I will talk about this one in further detail next week because I'm going to compare it with different page replacement algorithms. Uh, if I would like to talk about the kernel memory allocator, um, it generates and destroys small tables and buffers frequently due to the course of execution each of which requires dynamic memory allocation. Um, 
the following examples um, that would include uh, the kernel memory allocation jobs is that uh, most of these blocks are signif significantly um, smaller than typical pages. Therefore, paging would be inefficient. Allocations and free operations must be made as fast as possible. Uh, initially, it was um, um, adopted for SVR4, uh, a system or, a, uh, sorry, a technique that is called the lazy body. Um, this uh, technique um, was observed by authors um, uh, that uh, deals with the Unix operating system. Um, they have observed that uh, Unix uh, all, um, uh, like often exhibits uh, steady state behavior in kernel memory demands. And um, that is like amount of demand for blocks of a particular size would vary slowly in time. So based on this, um, they have been created um, um, uh, a system or like sorry, a technique to avoid un unnecessarily uh, splitting uh, of um, blocks into multiple blocks over the time because to avoid um, the slow in time solution, they started uh, um, dividing blocks into further blocks. And uh, it turns out that it even takes more time. So they assume that we will um, uh, provide a lazy body system, uh, which is similar to uh, the body system that we built before, uh, that will help in uh, providing uh, more uh, efficient memory management, especially for Unix operating systems. Um, I, I, I just wanted you to know that the lazy body is uh, similar to the body system we talked about it before by splitting and mapping to um, binary locations of, of multiple of twos, power of twos. Um, and it seems like it's, it's needed um, when actually there are many blocks that would need um, um, multiple uh, memory access locations. So, um, for Linux management system, uh, at the second case study for today's lecture, um, Linux uh, actually shares many of the characteristics of the memory management scheme of other Unix um, operate implementations, but it has its only unique features. Uh, overall, the Linux memory management uh, um, scheme is quite complex as compared to um, Unix. It has two main aspects. The first one related to process virtual memory, and the second one is kernel memory allocations. So Linux make use of um, a three level page table. In today's class, we talked about two level page table, but for Linux in particular, we have three level page table structure consisting of um, the following types of table, such that each individual table is the size of one page. A page directory, a middle, page direct, middle, middle directory, page middle directory, and a page table. Page uh, directory uh, um, uh, in which an active process has a single page directory uh, that is the size of one page each entry in the page directory points to one page of the page middle directory. The page directory uh, must be in the main memory for an active process. For the page middle directory, uh, the page middle directory may span multiple pages. Each entry in, um, um, in the middle, uh, in the page middle directory points to one page in the page table. For the page table, um, uh, the page table may also span multiple pages and each page table um, uh, entry refers to one page of a process. To use this uh, three level Page, uh, page uh, table structure, a virtual address in Linux is viewed as consisting of four fields. The leftmost um, field is used as index to the page directory. The next field serves as index to the page middle directory. The third field serves as an index to the page table. 
and the fourth field uh, gives the offset within the selected page of memory. The Linux page table structure um, is considered as platform independent, and it was designed to accommodate the 64-bit alpha processor, which actually provides hardware support for three-level paging. So with the use of the 64-bit addresses, the use of only two level of pages on the alpha would result in a very large page table and directories. The 32-bit um, x86 architecture has a two level hardware paging mechanism. Uh, the Linux software accommodates the two level scheme by defining the size of the page middle directory as one. Uh, note that all references to an extra level of indirections are optimized away at the compilation time, not even at the runtime. Therefore, there is no performance overhead for using generic three-level design on platforms which supports only two-level design in hardware. So again, there will be different beach replacement algorithms. Uh, I won't talk about this in more details um, I, uh, for next week. Uh, also for Linux, it uses the clock algorithm. Uh, and uh, there is a common bit is called the use bit uh, will be replaced by another bit, which is an age variable bit. Uh, this bit is incremented each time the page is accessed. Periodically, uh, periodically um, um, what happens with during the replacement algorithm is the age bit is decremented such that a page uh, with an age of zero is an old page that has not been referenced in some time and is best candidate for replacement. We will talk about replacement and the need of removing um, um, pages from the memory back and forth to the virtual memory and vice versa. Uh, also, in addition to the clock algorithm, we might need or might use another replacement algorithm that is called the least frequently used uh, algorithm. This is commonly used in Linux operating systems. So, when it comes to page replacement, uh, particularly in Linux, uh, the first time a page uh, would be on the act uh, on the inactive list. Uh, uh, if it's the first time to be accessed, then uh, a page reference flag is set. And the next time that page is accessed, it moved to the active list. That is, it takes two accesses for a page to be a declared active. More, pre more uh, precisely, it takes two access in different scans for a page to become active. If the second access doesn't happen soon, then a page reference um, is reset. And similarly, for active pages, two timeouts are required to move the page to the inactive list. Pages on the inactive list are then uh, available for page replacement using either the clock uh, uh, procedure or the least recently used algorithm that we discuss next week. For kernel memory allocation in Linux, uh, kernel memory capability manage physical memory, um, main memory uh, page frames such that the primary function is to allocate and deallocate frames for particular uses. Uh, possible owners of a certain frame would include user space processes, dynamically allocated kernel data, static kernel code, and even page cache. Also, we might use a body system uh, uh, such that the memory for the kernel can be allocated and even deallocated in units of one or even more pages. The page allocator alone would be inefficient because the kernel requires small short-term memory chunks in odd sizes. That's why Linux used slab allocation, which is commonly used to accommodate small chunks. The third operating system in today's class is Windows. The Windows Virtual Memory Manager controls how memory is allocated and how paging is performed. The Memory Manager is designed to operate over a variety of platforms and to use page sizes that would range from 4 kilobytes to 64 kilobytes. Intel and AMD64 platforms, they do have 
four kilobytes per page. And the Intel uh, Italian platforms have eight kilobytes per page. On a 32 platform, each user proce process sees a separate 32 bit address space, which allowing a four a gigabyte of virtual memory pair process. And as a matter of fact, by default, half is reserved for the operating system. Larger memory intensive applications run more effectively using the 64 bit windows. Most modern VCs use the AMD 64 processor architecture, which is capable of running as either 32 or 34 bit system. In the following figure, we can see the default virtual address space um, seen by a normal 32 bit user process, um, especially for uh, the Windows um, default 32 bit virtual address space. Um, I don't want you to go in, into more details about this specific translations uh, or uh, how this address space is accessed. I just want you to know that in uh, Windows, we might uh, use the 64 or the 32 um, um, address space. In particular, when a process is created, it can, uh, in principle, make use of the entire user space of almost the two uh, uh, gigabyte or even like eight terabytes on 64 uh, bit windows. This space is divided into uh, fixed size pages, um, any of which can be brought into main memory. However, the operating system manages the addresses in contiguous uh, regions allocated on a 64 um, uh, kilobyte boundaries. A region can be in one of three states. It could be either available which means addresses not currently used by this process or reserved means addresses that the virtual memory manager has set aside for a process so they can't be allocated to other process, which is really used to save uh, continuous space uh, for a stack to grow. And finally, committed means addresses that the virtual memory manager has initialized for use by the process to access virtual memory pages. These pages can reside either on disk or in physical memory. When on disk, they can be either kept in files, which we call it the mapped pages, or even occupy a space in the page file. The distinction between reserved and committed memory is useful because uh, reserved memory reduces the amount of total virtual memory space needed by the system, which allow the page file to be smaller. However, committed um, memory allows programs to reserve addresses without making them accessible to the program or having them um, charged against their resource codes. Um, there is a commonly used word or terminology that is called the resident set, uh, which is aligned to the replacement algorithms. There are a resident set management scheme used widely by Windows and is considered as variable allocation. Next week, we're going to talk about a static allocation and variable allocation. So it is variable allocation. When a process is first activated, it is assigned uh, a data structure to manage its working set. Uh, as the pages uh, needed by the process are brought into the physical memory, the memory manager uses the data structure to keep track of the pages assigned to the process. Working sets of active processes are adjusted using the following general convention. Uh, when um, the main memory is um, uh, plentiful, the virtual memory manager allows the resident set of active processes to grow. Uh, to do this when a page fault occurs, a new physical page is added to the process, but no older pages uh, are allowed to swap out. This would result in an increase of the resident set of that process by one page. 
uh, the second the second um, scenario when memory becomes scarce, the virtual memory manager recovers memory for the system by removing less recently used pages out of the working set of active processes, reducing the size of those resident sets. Even when the memory is actually plentiful, Windows watches for larger processes that are rapidly increasing their memory usage the system began to remove pages that have not been recently used from the process. This policy makes the system more responsive, uh, more respons uh, responsive because a new program will not uh, suddenly cause um, a scarcity of memory and make the user wait while the system tries to reduce the resident sets of the processes that are actually running. The final case study uh, operating system is Android. For memory management, we know that Android includes a number of extensions to the normal Linux kernel memory facility. Uh, this includes um, the Ash Mem, which is a feature um, provided within Android uh, that enables uh, anonymous uh, shared memory, uh, which abstracts memory as file descriptors. Um, a file descriptor at this point can be passed to another process to share memory. The second one is the PMEM, this feature within Android allows virtual memory so that it's physically uh, uh, um, um, continuous. This feature also is useful for hardware that doesn't support virtual memory. Finally, the low memory killer feature that enables the system to notify an application uh, that uh, they need to free up some memory. If an application doesn't cooperate, then it is terminated. Using those three uh, facilities, um, uh, the uh, Android uh, provide an efficient memory management to either free unused um, uh, memory locations to allow virtual memory accessing to provide hardware support to virtual memory or to uh, pass uh, another processes to um, shared memories. So, um, uh, most mobile devices they use uh, the low memory color because um, it's it's really good to um, to uh, to free a memory locations because of the flash memory lifetime considerations. When main memory is exhausted, the application or even application that would use the most memory um, must either uh, back off the reuse of the memory or could be actually terminated. This feature enabled the system to notify an application that there is a need of free memory. That's why most of the mobile devices, they use this feature, especially those Android devices. So in summary, in today's class, we talked about virtual memory. We talked about the virtual memory paging uh, using different uh, schemes that will adopt hierarchical uh, page um, strategy. And particularly, we talked about the two level page tables and then we said to avoid um, the drawbacks of the two, the, uh, the multi-level page tables, we will use the invertible page table. In addition to the translation look aside buffer, which provide multiple access to, um, uh, to memory to avoid the drawbacks of the invertible page tables. We talked about different address translation schemes. And finally, we talked about different operating systems, uh, memory management schemes. We talked about Linux, Unix, Windows, and Android. So this ends today's class. And for next week, we will talk about virtual segmentation and we're gonna talk about replacement algorithms and different notation related to um, the resident sets. Thank you for listening.